Today's lecture from 3.3 is talking about fitting a line to data, and we will start off by point-slope form of an equation. Point-slope form indicates that you will know the point, a solution point, a point that's on the line or satisfies the equation or graph, and the slope of it. So the textbook will write point-slope form as y equals I'm going to use m for slope, x minus, let's call it x1 plus y1, where x and y1 are the solution point of the problem. So all you have to do is fill in all the information and at times we may have to simplify it. So in this first example it says write an equation in point slope form for each line if the slope is 2 and it passes through the point for negative 3. So we're going to go y equals slope x minus 4 minus 3. That's actually a good equation. I tend to like it when they simplify these. So to simplify, I would distribute the 2 to both. And that's y equals 2x minus 8 minus 3. So another uh, slope intercept form would be y equals 2x minus 11. Now I can see that my slope is 2 and my intercept would be 0, negative 11. What if the slope is negative 3 and we pass through the point 2, 5? So again, we can take y equals negative 3 x minus 2 plus 5. And again, I would like to distribute the negative 3 to both of these. So we're going to have y equals negative 3x plus 6 plus the 5. So my final equation here would be y equals negative 3x plus 11 again. So when you look at both of these, I'm starting out with the point slope form and simplifying to y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form. What if they tell you to do a line that's parallel to the given line? So for this one, this line is given to us. Right now, it has a slope of negative one half. Parallel means to use the same slope. So I'm going to write this as y equals negative one-half slope x minus four and then you can write plus a negative two if you like or just write a negative two. So if I simplify this we will have y equals negative one-half x plus two. We have a double negative when you multiply plus two and then minus two. So I end up with y equals negative one half x. I guess you could write uh, plus zero if you'd like, but that would be fine. You know, plus zero. You do not have to write the zero. But in this case, you can see that the two lines, the one that I highlighted with pink, that has a slope of negative one half, and my new line down there has a slope of negative one half, but they have different intercepts. So those are parallel lines. We can do the same thing with perpendicular. Remember, when you have perpendicular slopes, we call the negative reciprocals. So right now, the given slope is negative 1 half. The perpendicular slope, then, is 2 over 1, or positive 2. So we would write y equals 
2 x minus negative 2 plus 6. Now be very careful because we have lots of negative signs here. So when you distribute the 2, you have 2 times x will give me 2x. The double negative is a positive 2, so when you distribute the 2 to the positive 2, you get 4, and then plus 6. Simplifying, you end up with y equals 2x plus 10. Now we're moving on, and this is a little bit of review. Remember that if you have zero slope, they're talking about a horizontal line. So a horizontal line is y equals. So what this is telling you is that you're going through the solution point, and what y value is in the solution point? It's a 3. So our equation would be y equals 3. Horizontal, slope, 0. Undefined slope is talking about a vertical line. A vertical line means your x is stuck at some point, and if you look at the solution point, it's 9, negative 3. So this is an x equals 9 line. Vertical, undefined slope. Manager of a concert hall keeps data on the total number of tickets sold and total sales income or revenue for each event. We're supposed to set up an XY axis and plot the data. So at this point, you should pause it and set up the data. Um, I used tickets. Those are my X values, and I went by... 25, so I wrote down 250, skipped the 275, 300, so every 25 on the uh, lines. And then for the revenue on my y-axis, I used, um, starting at 2,000, I went up by 500 to 2,500 20, here, 2,500. Um, so now we're going to plot those points. So again, pause it now, and let's plot those points. So I believe the points are looking something like this. Um, you can kind of see how they're lined up. Fairly straight. A couple things here and there look a little different, but um, that should be good enough. We're going to choose two points that, if connected, seem to fit the data. And at this point, um, it, it doesn't really matter what you pick, but if you kind of draw a straight line through it, I might say, let's grab, let's use this one. And let's use this one. So that's 320, comma, 2353.50. And this one must be my 533, 37. 84.50. It really won't matter as long as you don't. I would stay away from. I would stay away from this line at that point. Uh, just when I sketched it quick, it kind of ended up not fitting the data, so I would stay away from that one. So if we're going to calculate the slope, uh, you would use your calculators to do this work. You're going to do the y's minus the y's and x's minus the x's. So 37, 84, 50, minus 23, 53, 5, 0, all over 533 minus 320. So I did point 0.2 minus point 0.1, y minus y, x minus x. So you want to be careful typing those into your calculator. doing that now so we can divide by and I'm getting about 672 so when you look at this 672 it basically is for every ticket I sell I increase my revenue six dollars and seventy two cents Revenue increase. 
he says. Use your calculation to predict how much revenue would be made if the concert hall sold out all 650 seats. So the idea would be I can write my slope intercept form or my point slope form, excuse me, y equals 6.72 times x minus x1 plus y1. So you should be able to pick any one of your points. So let's just use one of them that we used up top. I can put 37, ugh, sorry, 37, 84.50, that's the y value of that point 2, will be 672x minus the 533, 